Okay, so in this video, what we're going to be looking at are the main settings associated with our blend shape deformers. And we're also going to have a little look at the considerations that we need to be aware of when creating our blend shapes. So what you can see here is a breakdown of the bouncing ball example that we looked at in the previous lesson. And you can see that I have my squash shape and my stretch shape. Now, the first thing I want to look at here is the vertex count. And this is very important when it comes to blend shapes because the way that the blend shape works is that Maya will analyze how many vertices you have on your object and then it checks to see that all the verts on the target shapes are the same. Because what Maya does is that when we ask it to deform between two different shapes is it will try and match up one of the verts. So say for example this vertex here, it will try and match that on our target shape. Now, the way that we can make sure that we have the same vertex count for all of our different shapes is to make sure that we always duplicate our shapes from our original base mesh. However, you can also double check this if we go up to the display, heads up display, and click on the poly count. And if we go into our vertex mode, we can see how many verts that we have. So we've got 98 in our base shape, and we can double check that on the squash shape. That's 98 as well. and on the stretch shape as well. Now there are instances where the vertex count can be avoided but we're going to be looking at how to do that a little bit later on. However I would always recommend that if you're doing any kind of facial shape that you always stick to the same vertex count because it's going to minimize any problems that you have later down the line in your pipeline. It's really only for very special circumstances that you would choose to have a blend shape with more vertexes than its base mesh. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that heads up display for the time being. And now let's have a look at actually how to go ahead and create our first blend shape. So as I said before, we're going to find the deformer and blend shape menu under our create deformers in the animation menu set. I'm going to open this up, create deformers, blend shape, option box. I'm just going to move that over to the side here and reposition the viewport so that we can go over some of the options in here and also apply our first shape. The first thing that we need to be aware of is that we have a blend shape node label window here. So I'm just going to call this squash. We have an envelope and essentially that's just the scale of our deformation. Okay, so generally I would always leave that at the default of one. Next we have our origin, which is local or world. We're going to have a little look at what those do in a little second. And then we have our target shape options. So there's an option for an in-between, check topology and delete targets. In between, we're going to be looking at in a later lesson. The check topology links up with what I was talking about a little bit earlier about making sure that we have the same amount of verts on each of our target shapes. Okay, so that's basically just making sure that Maya will do that check. And then we have delete targets down here. And basically all that's going to do is that once we've created a blend shape, it would delete the targets that we created. And that's simply from an efficiency point of view. Okay. My general workflow is that I tend not to delete the targets as it allows me to edit them at a later stage. Okay, And that's again something else we're going to look at a bit later on. So let's go ahead and actually create our first blend shape. The procedure for this is to first select your target shape and then hold down the shift key and then select your base head. Now if we just wanted to create one blend shape then we would just select one shape. However, we can go ahead and we can actually shift select both of our shapes and then select our base head at the end. Then all we do is hit create. Our blend shape deformer window will disappear. And what you'll notice is if I select our base mesh here and go into the channel control, you'll notice that we now have squash one and that there is our blend shape nodes. Now the easier way to get to this is if you go into the window, animation editors and blend shape, it'll bring up our two sliders. So now if I was to go ahead and move these from zero to one, you can see our blend shapes in action. Now, if I want to get rid of these, all I have to do is in the blend shape window, hit the delete key, and that will remove our blend shape from our base mesh. The last thing that I want to look at in this video is the difference between the local and world origin of a blend shape. Now, the example I've just shown you was the local option, and what that means is that the shape will actually deform where the base mesh is, okay? So as it goes between our different shapes, our base mesh will not move. If I go into my blend shape window here again, and we just, for example, apply the squash uh, shape here, but instead of going to the local origin, we choose world and hit apply, close that down, go back into our animation editors and bring up our blend shape window, 
and then I go from 0 to 1. Watch what happens. Now, rather than our shape just deforming where it was, it now moves towards the actual target shape. Now, this can be very useful in certain circumstances, but for 99% of the time, you're going to want to make sure that it's set to local. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that there. Close that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through this one more time and set this up for our next lesson, which is going to be looking at how to key our blend shapes. So I'm going to select my stretch shape, squash shape, and my base mesh. Go to create deformers, blend shape, we'll call it squash and stretch. Check the origin to local, leave everything else at default, and hit create. And you'll notice that I didn't delete my target shapes. Instead, I'm going to select them and I'm going to pop them on a layer. So now if I go back into my animation window here, both my shapes are now applied.